Hi, my name is Davey Kelly. I am a junior here at Virginia Tech in the Mining and Minerals Engineering Department, and I'm here today to give you an information session about our Department of Engineering. Generally, we like to do these sessions in person, but unfortunately, we can't have visitors to campus right now, so we're going to make the best of it and have this online. Uh, first of all, what does it take to be an engineer? Uh, the first most important thing for being an engineer is creativity. As an engineer, it is your job to think outside the box. We find answers to questions that might not even have been asked before. We find ways to do things better. Another thing is teamwork. When you get a job, you will rarely ever be working on a project by yourself, so it's very important to learn working the skills you need to work with others right now. So that's a big thing they try to teach you here at Virginia Tech. Another thing is study habits. A lot of students get through their challenging high school classes without studying at all. I know I was one of those. That does not fly here at Virginia Tech. There, will, there might be a little bit of a culture shock for you, but you will get the study habits you need to succeed here. Last thing is an interest in math and science. You don't necessarily have to be good at every science and every type of math, but you're going to find the type of science that you like, and you're going to pick the engineering that emphasizes that. For me, I don't like biology, biology so I stayed away from biomed and biological systems. And the last thing is challenging high school background, ABs, IBs, CLEP honor courses, and extracurriculars. That just shows that you're a well-rounded student, you're good at time management, and you may already have these study habits that I was talking about a couple seconds ago. Uh, here are some statistics about our College of Engineering. Our average GPA for 2019 was 4.2 out of 5. If your GPA is not on a 5-point scale, don't worry about it. We uh, Basically, you send your numbers to admissions, they put in some kind of fancy calculator, and they will figure it out for you. Uh, average SAT math and reading, 707.655. Uh, females, 20.7%. That is a bit higher than the national average, and we're very proud of that. And then underrepresented minorities is 29.4%. That is also a little bit higher than the national average for engineering classes. Uh, so what's your freshman year at Virginia Tech going to look like? Common entry point classes, there's a QR code on the screen. If you want to scan it, it'll show you a list of common first year classes. Uh, that's just... Common classes we will have as your calculus, your chem one, classes every engineer here will take. Then AP, IB, CLEP, dual credits. Uh, there's a link on there. If you follow that, it'll tell you what your AB, AP, IP classes will be worth here. If you don't see your class listed, don't worry about it. It just means no one's asked before. You can still send your information to admissions and they will figure out what it's worth for you. Uh, pathways for general education curriculum. So the way Virginia Tech has recently started doing their general education classes is something we call pathways. Whereas for me, it was just a bunch of classes from random uh, subjects all over the place. Now they formulate those classes to put you better in a direction to actually go somewhere, such as a minor. And then at the end of your freshman year, you get to pick what type of engineering you want to be doing. If you have a 3.0, you're guaranteed your first choice of engineering here. Uh, that isn't to say if you don't have a 3.0, you won't get your first choice. It's just if Mechanical has enough faculty for 300 students and they have 320 with over that 3.0, they will hire more faculty to accommodate you. If they have less than that with a 3.0, they'll let everyone in until they've capped how many faculty they have per student ratio they want. Uh, your freshman year, you'll take a class called Foundations of Engineering. This class emphasizes design teamwork and uh, disciplines. You learn a little coding. It just teaches you all around how to think like an engineer and it'll let you better make a decision on what type of engineering you want to go into. And then your second semester of this class, you have a large semester long project where you'll build a drone or a wind turbine. And it's really cool for the, if you've never built something before to see a project you've made come to fruition. Here are the statistics for every, uh, the membership in every type of engineering that we have here. Uh, the biggest is engineering education because every freshman in the College of Engineering is in that major. And then you can see besides that, the biggest actual graduating major for engineering is mechanical, and then ocean and mining are the smallest two. If you want to know your approximate graduating class size, take that number and divide it by three, and that's about where you're sitting at. So now what we're gonna do is go through each of our degree granting engineering disciplines one at a time for you so you can get a better idea of what you think you might wanna study when you get here. First, we have electrical engineering. They deal with uh, just electrical seat systems in general, everything from big power systems, countywide, statewide, to small stuff that you would see in a microchip and everything in between. And then next we have computer science. They deal with computer programming, so anything software inside a computer. So nothing you can actually touch when it comes to computers. All the stuff you code 
in an engine and make come up on the screen. And then we have computer engineering, which is where those last two kind of meet. They learn a little bit of computer science, a little bit of electrical engineering, so that they can better make computer hardware, such as microchips, circuits, things of that nature. Next, we have biological systems engineering. This is engineering of very large scale entire ecosystems. A lot of these people will end up working in food processing, in agriculture, or in water quality management. Uh, then we have chemical engineering. People always ask, what's the difference between a chemistry student and a chemical engineer? Chemistry students are worried about molecule to molecule. Chemical engineers are worried about very large scale production. So as a chemical engineer, you will be taking a lot of the same classes that a chemical, chemistry student would, but you're just going to ramp that up to a much bigger scale. A very interesting thing about this is you get the opportunity to take a summer class in Europe if you would want to. Uh, next, we have material science engineering. So they are the engineers who are concerned with the stuff that the rest of us make stuff out of. So one big project that they got to work on a few years ago was, uh, as you can see on the screen in the bottom right, a football player named Cedric Humes broke his arm. And they wanted to play him in a game against, I want to say, Miami, so that if we won, we'd go to the ACC championship. But you can't wear a cast in a football game because the NCAA calls that a weapon. So they called the material science engineers, and they said, hey, can you make us a cast that doesn't count as a weapon? And they did, and he played, and we won. Uh, mining and minerals engineering. This is what I do. So we are concerned with getting raw materials out of the ground and any engineering project that comes up in the process of that. One of those is, as my, my favorite, is blasting. We load explosives, we design explosives, and when we blow the ground up, we want the pile to be exactly where we want it for the most efficient movement of material. In addition to that, we do personnel management often. We also do a little bit of chemistry because we will process our minerals. Uh, then we have civil engineering. Everyone knows what a civil engineer does, right? They build bridges. But uh, there's more than that. Civil engineering actually has the project here with the largest research expenditure on campus, and that is the Virginia Tech Smart Road. Uh, a lot of car companies will come in with their latest car designs and bring it to the smart road so they can drive around on it and it'll do things like testing brakes for them, uh, testing bad road conditions. It's just anything you could come up on the road, they will test that on the car in the smart road facility. Construction engineering and management. So a few years ago, a bunch of major construction companies came to Virginia Tech and they were like, hey, we love your civil engineering students, we love your building construction students, so we love your management students. Could we mash all those degrees together into one big one and have students graduate with all that experience. So that's what they did. They made this new uh, career option. And a really good thing about them is they have 100% job placement out of college. So something to consider. Uh, aerospace and ocean engineering. Everyone knows about aerospace and ocean. It's just airplanes, boats, really interesting things about these is that uh, if you have one, you're about three classes away from getting a degree in the other, so it's very, very common to double major here. Another thing we're very proud of is we have a really, really good wind tunnel here at Virginia Tech. It's actually NASA's old one. NASA was getting a new wind tunnel, and they're like, does anyone want it? And we said yes, and we got it, and then NASA got their new one, and it actually was worse than the old one, so they asked for it back, and we said no. So we still have it. Uh, mechanical engineering, they're kind of the jack of all trades of engineering. Anything that moves is the business they take care of. As you can see on screen, there's a lot of different places you can go with this. Uh, and there's also a lot of design teams that mechanical engineering gets into, which I will talk about later. Biomedical engineering is our newest type of engineering here at Virginia Tech. Currently, it is a limited program, whereas the 3.0 rule does not apply. Every year, they're going to slowly admit more students to this program so that they can make sure that the program is of the quality they want without flooding it with students. But here you can work on everything from uh, medicine to prosthetics to it's also a great pre-med option. So a lot of options here and a great new addition to our engineering disciplines. So next we have engineering science and mechanics. This is no longer a degree granting major here at Virginia Tech. It is only a graduate student. Uh, discipline, but it is very important because people who study engineering, science, and mechanics, they are the engineers who figure out how all the other types of engineering work. So for the rest of us, we will take an equation that we know always works and we'll use that. Engineering, science, and mechanics, they figure out why that equation works. And this is important because a lot of your classes are covered by engineering, science, and mechanics, and we all have to take these classes. 
The last we have industrial systems engineering. Uh, this engineering is taking a step back, looking at an entire system and finding ways to make it more efficient. It's very common in manufacturing processes as well as uh, traffic controls actually. FedEx used, FedEx recently did a study that found that three right turns is faster than one left turn. That's industrial systems engineering. So now they, their GPSs are routed to make three right turns before one left turn. For more information, please Google Explore Engineering at Virginia Tech and you will find uh, just a host of information on our College of Engineering. Uh, other opportunities available, one is minors. There's numerous minors within the College of Engineering such as computer science and cybersecurity is also getting very big now. Uh, green Engineering is another one that's gathering a lot of interest. There are also uh, minors outside the College of Engineering. For example, I'm getting a history minor just because I enjoy history a lot. Uh, the study abroad opportunities, uh, which I'll get into one major one a little more later, but there are a lot of opportunities to leave the country and study if you want to. Undergraduate research, there's, every college has tons of undergraduate research opportunities. You just have to go looking, you can get on something, and maybe you'll even have your name on a paper. Uh, and then engineering professional societies and organizations, there, that can range from, for mining engineering, we have the Society of Mining Engineers. Uh, so every year a group of our students goes to a conference and meets with industry members and we get to better network. Every college, uh, every engineering discipline at Virginia Tech has one of those. And here's a list of the locations of internships and co-op experiences that Dean's team members have had. This isn't the College of Engineering, this is only a small number of people. If this was the whole College of Engineering, the map would be entirely covered. Here at Virginia Tech, we have a lot of support outside of class. This includes career fairs. Virginia Tech actually has the largest student-run career fair in the country. It is called Engineering Expo, and it is the first or second week of classes usually. Interesting thing about that picture you see there, the woman in maroon is the recruiter. The student is in the suit. We have lots of alum come back and try to get us. Seed peer mentoring is also a great resource here at Virginia Tech. What they will do is, as a freshman, they will set you up with an upperclassman student and they will help you navigate your life in college better. And that could range anywhere from where's the best place on campus to eat to how, what are some good study strategies. I've never had to do this before. STEP is also good for developing those study strategies because what you will do is a few weeks before classes start, you will come to Blacksburg and you will take your first, you will take your freshman classes all the way up to the first exam and those grades do not count so that you can see what you need to be doing, you can learn to study correctly and then once you do that you start all over again and you've had your four weeks of classes already, you're already ahead. Then last, Hypatia and Galileo, I highly recommend this. I did as a freshman. There is a dorm here on campus called Lee Hall. Everyone in that dorm is an engineer uh, and you get the mentoring too. You will be set up with a mentor so you get all the seed mentoring bonuses plus Everyone in your dorm is an engineer. So if you have a question about homework, yell outside. Someone has the same homework as you. Everyone will have exams on the same day, so you'd never have to worry about rowdy neighbors keeping you up when you're trying to study. Hands on, minds on. We have numerous design teams here at Virginia Tech that range from things all over the place in our engineering disciplines, honestly. We have a concrete canoe team that the civil engineers get in on. We have a project where they send us a sports car and we rewire it so that it's an electric sports car. There's this thing called Baja, which is basically riding around in a dune buggy in the mud. Uh, there's this really long list here you can see of all these different design teams. Look into them if any of them interest you. It's a lot of fun. VT Engineering Rankings. We have a lot of rankings that say we're doing a pretty good job here at Virginia Tech Engineering. My personal favorite, not listed here, number one in food. But uh, yeah, we have really good numbers backing us up here at Virginia Tech. Outcomes. Freshmen who continue to a second year in engineering Freshmen who last five years average 90%. That's really good because at, they told us on our first day, at most engineering colleges, they'll say, look to your left, look to your right. One of you is not going to make it. That's not how we do it here at Virginia Tech. We want all of you to succeed. It won't be easy, but the faculty are here to help you. Uh, for the class of 2018, 67% are employed and 30% plan to attend graduate school or have accepted admission. So right there, that's 80%. I know you're thinking 80%, not quite where we'd like it to be. We'd like it to be higher. Well, a lot of the 20% just didn't answer the survey we sent them. Then a lot, median starting salary, $65,000 for our class of 2018. Also pretty good. Scholarships. For freshmen, the big ones you want to look into are the Davenport Leadership Scholar and the Pratt Engineering Scholarship. And then there's uh, financial aid, which is also an option. Fill out your FAFSA. And then the Leo A. Pata Scholarship is for transfers from other Virginia community colleges. So if that applies to you, 
definitely look into that one. Uh, and then for upperclassmen, there is a large pot of College of Engineering funds. That's just due to the fact that generally when alumni graduate, they're more interested in donating to the college they graduated from instead of engineering education. Next, we have computer guidelines, uh, two and one laptop. Generally, what we say is just look up the specs after March 31st because uh, it could all change on March 31st, and that's when they release the official thing, so don't go buying anything before then. Finally, why did I come to the College of Engineering at Virginia Tech? For me, it was always an easy choice. I'm from an hour down the road. I've been a Hokie my whole life, been to football games. I, it was the only school I applied to. Uh, if you have any more questions, I know I ran through all the different types of engineering pretty fast, but we have a time constraint here. Please reach out to us, and we can fill you in on more information. Thank you, and go Hokies.